Hi, I'm Bill Arnold. Thank you for listening to this podcast. There are many more podcasts available at MyFaithRadio.com. Your support makes this possible. Thank you. And a warm welcome to the afternoon show. I'm Bill Arnold. And you know that we have a tendency of having difficulty with parent-child relationships. It seems like it's from the beginning in life uh, to as we get to become older adults, we sometimes have issues with our folks. And we, you know, hopefully have a great relationship with your parents. And, and parents, I hope you have a great relationship with your children and their kids. Uh, but difficulties can arise. And sometimes it involves setting boundaries. And boundaries can be challenging and difficult as well. And people can feel overwhelmed by them, especially when parents uh, having their adult children set boundaries with them. And sometimes adult children trying to love their parents well, but find it hard to set good boundaries. These are very challenging uh, circumstances. And my guest, Todd Mulliken, uh, understands this a great deal because he deals with it in his office often. And we're going to talk about it today. As a matter of fact, it was the inspiration for a book he wrote a while ago called called Being Right Versus Being Liked. And uh, we're going to talk about that as well today and also about the challenging situations between parents and kids. Todd is a counselor. He is a professor and he's an author. You can learn more about him at his website at toddmulliken.com. If he's paid his bills, it should be up and running. Thanks for reminding me, sir. You've got till the end of the month. I well, is yeah. it running? I didn't. No, check. I mean it's August second. I, I didn't. I don't work Fridays, so <laughs> right. I have to take care. I of I didn't that check on to see if it was up and running today, but I hope it is. I appreciate that. Yeah, because I, I definitely want people to go check out your website, <laughs> ToddMulliken dot com. All right, Todd. This uh, subject comes up often in your counseling office. Parents having their adult children setting boundaries with them, and it is hard, and they feel overwhelmed by it. Mm. What's going on? You know, I've been around long enough to f- to feel like it's been more the last 20 years of my practice versus the first 15 years of my practice. So it feels like it's something that has gained traction okay. uh, with... Uh, the, the, you know, my generation growing up, you know, I, I remember kind of wrestling with that a little bit, uh, and, but I see it and I've seen it for a good 20 plus years where the, these main patterns come where, you know, children that get married are trying to create, a, you know, a level of separation and autonomy, right? Mm-hmm. And their own stories and their own traditions and all the things they feel led to do by God and are for those things. And, you know, sometimes they'll bump into, uh, you know, disagreements with one of the, uh, you know, their spouse's parents or something. Sure. And they bump into those disagreements and, you know, they don't always go well, right? And so how do we handle those? How do we as adult children honor our parents as, it's a, as it offers biblically in one of the commandments? Uh, how do I as a parent act honorably, right, and not have a need to be acquiesced to, but see my children as, you know, image bearers of God too. And how do I, you know, have good traction with that as a parent? So I thought it would be good to kind of give some ideas on what both sides of the coin can do, right? Yeah. What, what, what can the adult children do to set boundaries well out of love and respect and honor to their parents when, when need be in terms of, you know, when they knew to need to set boundaries, not everybody needs to set boundaries, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also as a parent, you know, how do we handle it when the boundaries are being set on upon us, right? How do we receive that? How do we dialogue about that? How do we, you know, have faith informed discussions about it and, be it our wise mind in Christ in these really difficult moments. So I just think it's something that happens a lot. I mean, it gets a little louder during, you know, the holidays and during the summertime with cabins and, mm-hmm. you know, visiting each other and all the things. But, yeah. right, but I see it a lot. It's, it's one of the top five issues I deal with in my office. And yeah. I have. Well, Todd, there has to be a, a risk of a certain level of hurt and alienation on behalf of the parents. But yeah. they're being told that boundaries are being set, and that's going to infringe on their time with their kids and their grandkids. That's horrible. Yeah, that first re- is a great point. And I think, 
I think it's hard to, you know, when you're on the receiving end of that information, typically out of nowhere, right? Typically it's a, it's something that has been discussed by the, the younger couple, right? And they're maybe dialoguing about it. And now they're going to bring that information to the parents. And so you're absolutely right, Bill. It's a really good word. Like they hear that and how do they respond to that in the moment? Because I'm going to feel overwhelmed and feel frightened. After all I've done for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so there's going to be a level of hurt and alienation and that's horrible. It is. Because you want to be honoring your father and your mother always. Mm. Mm-hmm. So how do we go about that, right? Now, also, uh, as, a, as a good leader, leaders need to recognize when they make mistakes. Right? Can they admit to that? Well, <laughs> and, and right, if they admit to that, then that couple who I'm seeing that are in their 30s and are having arguments themselves, and if they've never learned from their parent how to say they're sorry, they won't say they're sorry to their spouse. Mm. What if one of the... Let's say the the wife doesn't like the in-laws. Then what? Yeah. And and it's they're using some kind of manipulation and they're calling it boundaries, but it's it's something deeper than that. It's it's I don't like you. Yeah. That's that's sad. Yeah. Well, and you know, I I would say there's probably you know, there's not not all cases are the same. I would say that the main things I see are one uh this issue needs to be called out, and I, as a parent, maybe have been not doing my best, and I can acknowledge that as a good leader. I also see quite a bit of, whether it's that daughter-in-law or son-in-law, mm-hmm. if they themselves grew up in a family system that had lots of intense arguments and lots of stress, now they are in a situation with their in-laws that aren't the same, but they maybe look for it or mm-hmm. they feel it. Or as you and I have talked about before, they'll have a, a trauma response to that when one of the parents does something that reminds them of what they grew up in. And now they're in that negative alteration of thought and mood, which is one of the trauma triggers we get. And so they're lit up and now they are bringing that in this case, let's say it's the daughter, uh, they're bringing it to their husband. Mm-hmm. And their husband is now having to wear that and decide what he wants to do with that and whether he wants to set a boundary or not or have that initial discussion with his parents or not. How does he handle that, right? Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that a husband, you know, I think is called to do is to protect his wife. One of the five Ps. One of the five Ps. So how do I do that well when I feel like... So let's say my first part is true. You know, I, what she's noticing is kind of right. I've noticed it for a long time. Yeah, you know, dad's kind of hard on mom, and I see it. And it's not really my business, but I've been impacted by it, and now my wife has seen it, and it's disruptive, and she doesn't want our kids around that, and here we go, right? Mm-hmm. So how do I handle that if I'm the the son, the husband, how do I address that and um, protect my wife, and but also be honest with my wife about how I am feeling about it? And so I just I want to name like it's there isn't an easy fix, but to your earlier point, I think it's always a good posture start for the kids to honor their parents, right, and start mm-hmm. there. Yes, and for the parents to be honorable as good leaders. Right, I think those are the postures we want moving forward that give really, because I've seen plenty of situations where it's just really helpful, it's not boundaries. Because a lot of people, it feels like, Bill, today what's happening, at least I've noticed this quite a bit, is people are building cases against the other. Right? What do you building, mean by that? Well, they're building a case against their spouse. You know, Here's the five things wrong. I've listened to a podcast, and here's their issues. And so I, I'm unintentionally building a case against you versus building a case for you. Mm-hmm. Now, hey, it's not a good idea to build a case for someone if they have untreated alcoholism and all the other things that might be really hard, but they have they might have issues in their life that they're really hurting from, and that's why they're using. And so I guess what I'm saying is that I think it's, it's, it's pretty easy these days to build cases against a parent, build cases against a spouse, build cases against a friend. And I'm just asking us, especially as Christ followers, to stay, you know, stay honest, stay open, but also see the other right? And their story. Yeah. 
and and start from that place of empathy and compassion. Let's start there versus, yeah, here's what you're not, here's what you're not, here's what you're not, here's what you're not. So that's a side thing, Bill, but I think what, I think what helps these conversations is what is mine? You and I have talked a little bit about this before. What's my mindset going into it? Right. So I'm the daughter-in-law, let's say. My mindset is I see these issues, but hey, I love my husband. You know, I do respect his folks, but I see this issue and maybe it's reminding me of my stuff, but I don't know if it is. But I want to be honest with my spouse, but I also want to really be, you know, honorable to him and his family and respect that. So what I talk about with couples, Bill, is kind of a mutual protection policy. I hope this lands okay for you. Like, I would have the wife in this case say, hey, you know, it's my, it's my husband's family, and how am I being respectful because I love him? How am I being respectful when I'm there? Mm-hmm. Okay, out of respect for him, out of my love for him. Mm-hmm. And if I'm the husband, hey, how do I protect my wife and, um, you know, and protect her? You know, and be honest about that because I'm be, I might be a little blinded to my own family stuff. I might want to choose my 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 fam my parents over my wife. That's sometimes how a wife feels in delicate situations. She'll feel like you're choosing, you know, your parents uh, over over me. Yeah. So I I want to say that we are pro boundaries. This conversation is pro boundaries. Big time. Yeah. Okay. Good. A, a comment just came in. Uh, that it's necessary to create boundaries with your parents and in-laws when they are controlling and manipulative? And the answer is, of course. Of course. Yeah. Yep. And a boundary would be an action I will take to protect my ability to love within the relationship. Yes. So well boundaries said. are meant to help us be at our best in Christ, right? They're, it help us be clear. We're in our wise mind. We see what is true. It, it creates that space that helps us move from dis, a dysregulated mind to a regulated mind mm-hmm. in Christ. Yeah. Todd, let's talk about some specific examples of boundaries. Give me, give me some concrete stuff. What, yeah. What's so the, a boundary? So I have, in, the, in that book, I talk about three basic boundaries. The first boundary, in we're, when we're going into something delicate like this, let's say we see something that we're concerned by or using that listener's view, uh, I'm feeling controlled by this family stuff or feeling manipulated by it. So I, I want to first have an honest conversation. So I'm setting a boundary by having an honest conversation where not out of left field, but I'm talking to my spouse about it first. Hey, here's what's happening, and this is what I'm feeling. And then a couple of shows ago, you and I talked about this. How do we talk as a couple about hard stuff? Well, I'm going to be vulnerable to my spouse about what I see in their family that I'm kind of hurt by or feeling manipulated by or controlled by. And if I'm the spouse, I'm going to try to validate what they're feeling and, and try to understand what they're feeling. Va- valid- or validation doesn't mean acquiescing and always agreeing, but I really want to hear them and honor what they're feeling. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we have that mutual discussion and say, hey, well, how do we talk to your folks about this in a really honorable way, in a loving way, and bring up an issue or a behavior that we've seen that we felt controlled by? How do we just do that in a really respectful way, right? Mm-hmm. Not in a passive way where we avoid it, not in an aggressive way where we violate the right of the other. And you and I have, in previous shows, we've talked about the difference between aggressive behavior, passive behavior, and assertive behavior, which is our gold standard in Christ. I'm going to be assertive. We're going to talk about this. So in this case, uh, that would be the first boundary offer is that um, the the parents and this couple would meet and have an honorable discussion that would be a mutual volley. Like, so I would lead out with if I'm, let's say, you know, let's say it is the daughter-in-law that's hurt and frustrated and I'm the son and we're all four there. I'm going to say, hey, you know. I want to lead out with, you know, that we love you guys and we're for you and appreciate our relationship. And here's an area that we're struggling with. And so we just both wanted to share some of the feelings we're having about it. And then we want to make a request. Okay. And so I always talk about that. Share feelings that you're having. Like, hey, I'm feeling uh, wounded in these situations or I'm feeling hurt or I'm feeling disrespected. Uh, And I also then want to make a request that, you know, we try to, you know, avoid that behavior or be talked to in a different way. Mm-hmm. And so that's the lead out. That's the lead out boundary. And then we would invite them to respond, right? Yeah. If, so they're, that, still, if they're still in the room. Correct. <laughs> right. So this, this is the first boundary, Bill, right? Yeah, I'm we, saying. We're going to try this first. Say, right? Someone doesn't get up and walk out of the room at this point. They might. I want to say right. how I'm feeling. Well, yeah. do they care? Yeah. Well, and that, and that will confirm it more, right? Well, so I I, if I'm a parent, I, I care a lot about what they feel versus I'm going to defend and run. And, you know, I can't believe you bring, look at all I've done for you. 
Well, I would say as a parent, like I would say for me, like if one of my daughters said, hey, I've got an issue, let's talk about it. What do you got? You know, well, 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 tell me more. Like, mm-hmm. I love you. I'm for you. What's going on? So hopefully my confidence in who I am in Jesus enough is going to say, what do you got? Yeah. Versus like, hey, well, hey look what I did for you. So, oh, you, you know, so I, I did it for you because to create an opportunity for you, hopefully, to have a good marriage and to live a full life and to be honest about hard things, right? This might take some advanced communication skills, though. It takes a lot of work, but it takes a lot of prep, right? What do you mean prep? Prep meaning like, hey, you know, what I want to do in my quiet time is practice like, hey, this honest conversation happened and I found myself just wanting to run for the hills. Like, I just wanted to leave and... And that's a valid feeling to have, you know. So let's say one of the parents said, "I got to get out of here. This is too hard." Or, "Sure, I feel really hurt by what you said. I, I'm not going to talk right now." Mm-hmm. So they leave, and so it doesn't mean that's a one-off conversation. It means, well, okay, let's let's try that again if we can. Mm-hmm. Right. So then there's dynamics there with that dad or mom that left that situation, right? And they're them as a couple are going to have to have their conversation about what they want to do. And then, so we'll follow up from there and have a second conversation. So the first boundary move, Bill, is to see if we can have some volleys around what the issue is. We're going to try that first. Mm -hmm. Todd, sometimes I think you have a hard job (laughs) being in the counseling (laughs) office trying to navigate your way through Mm -hmm. some of these issues. These are serious, real, and they're um, the stakes are high. They're generational, Bill, yeah. and it's not like, but I view these as get-tos versus have-tos. I do. I view it as opportunities versus obligations. Right? Okay. I view it as like, this is, the, this is where the rubber hits the road with integrating, you know, the comfort, the advocacy, the power of the Holy Spirit in difficult, which doesn't mean we're lighting a candle. I mean, the gospel is full of conversations that go south. You know, they don't go well, but God's still on the throne and we're still for each other and let's come back and try it again. Mm-hmm. And those, so that's that first boundary is yeah. let's try to have an honest conversation from a respectful place. And know that the first conversation may not go well. Correct. And that doesn't mean we did it wrong. It doesn't mean we we're outside of God's will. It doesn't mean, we, you know, we didn't pray enough about it. It means it was really hard and there could be generational stuff going oh, on yeah. there. Yeah, right? there's, some, and, there's some deep waters there. Right. And yeah. we know that, but we respect that. We know that going in as the young couple, and we hopefully, as as parents, can realize, yeah, this, well, let's see what we can hear. Let, what can we learn from that? Because good leaders are always in the business of learning and growing, too. Mm-hmm. All right. Todd Mullican is my guest. We're going to take a little break and come back and talk about boundaries between parents and children, even though you're adults. Uh You still need to have good boundaries. We'll be right back. You might be the kind of person that goes to Paris and still listens to Faith Radio on the app. Or you might be more like the person that goes into the next room in your apartment and listens. The good news is, is using the app is just as easy in both places. Downloading the free app is crazy easy. Just text the word app to 877-933-2484 and click the link. And if you happen to be in Paris, there is a really nice little coffee shop not far from the Eiffel Tower that serves a really nice chocolate biscotti. I'm back with Todd Mulliken. You can learn more about Todd at toddmulliken.com. He's a counselor and a professor and an author, and we're always uh, glad to have Todd on because he... He has so much practical wisdom on top of 30 plus years of doing this. And we're chatting today about how important boundaries are. And boundaries don't come easily, especially when uh, parents are having their adult children set boundaries with them. And it's hard for them and it overwhelms them. And then adult children are trying to love their parents well, but find it hard to set good boundaries. And in uh, your five Ps, uh, the man needs to protect his wife. So... Uh, there's maybe occasions where the husband is going on the side of his parents instead of standing up for his wife, and that's hurtful. Yeah, that's and really challenging. There can be times when the in-laws are being manipulative, and that you, you need boundaries for that as well. Well said. Yeah. So the first main boundary that's happening is this idea of trying to have uh, honest conversations. And, you know, uh, the boundaries, initial boundaries book, it's interesting, Bill, like 30 plus years ago, we just started saying this word boundaries in counseling. Like, let's set boundaries, and this is what we need to do. And then Henry Cloud and John Townsend, two Christian psychologists, wrote an amazing book uh, called Boundaries. 
and it's been a bestseller for decades. <laughs> I know John. I know um, you know uh, Henry Cloud. Henry, yeah. yeah. And I was, I said, hey Henry, I, uh, uh, your book Boundaries. I, I said I hated it. He goes, ah, oh, you read it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. He's, he's the best. Oh, he is so oh he's wonderful. great. He's, he's a very so, funny guy. Yeah, he's just class. He's just yeah. wonderful. Yeah, him and John just have done great work in the area of boundaries. So, uh, if you're looking for specific tools, pick up the Boundaries book. is is really good. I would also offer like John Gottman's book, uh, Fight Right. Yeah, is also very good. Oh, scary smart guy. Yeah, really John solid. Gottman. Yeah, and then also you know. You know, without at the risk of tooting my own horn in being right versus being liked, it's got some practical ways to have these conversations too. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, that's the first boundary now. And you said it. You said it perfectly, Bill. More often than not, these conversations don't go well the first time. Now, and once in a while, who, they will. Who wants to do it if it's not going to go well? Right. So then we kind of avoid the mess and we carry the mess. Yeah. yeah. And then we. So you know, do we address every little mess? Do, no, we have to let some things go. Give it up to the arms of the Lord and let it go, right? But we certainly don't want to build resentment against if we're going to let it go. So yeah, Todd, how do you do this well without it coming out sideways? When I look at the the way in which people have their schedules, they're so busy and they have so much going on, and you know, kids have Franklin planners. Nowadays. <laughs> I mean, they're so booked with activity and there's yeah. so much going on. How do you create safe space to have these conversations Mm. versus as you're walking out the door saying, hey, and another thing, uh, we're going to do this and this, and that's not going to go well. I'm just saying to create a safe space to have these kinds of important conversations requires some thought and planning. Well said. I one thing I've been talk, telling people to add, to add to their quiet time is this type of practice in your mind. So you're practicing in your mind, along with the help of the Holy Spirit, just how you would want to communicate this, and along with reading a good book, <laughs> and just be practicing. I mean, because what you're right about is like we bring this hurt to this delicate discussion, and then our hurt mind will override our wise mind. Yeah. So, Todd, do you have other examples of what's going on in your office about setting up boundaries and things that didn't go well and conversations that didn't go well, just so we can sort of do a little bit of a peek behind the curtain? Sure. So let's say that uh, what you just said just happened. The father leaves the room or the mother leaves the room. It doesn't go well, right? So this couple is the the daughter-in-law brings it up to her husband. They come into my office and say, golly, you know, this has really been a a pattern we've seen for nine years. And, you know, uh, Todd, this has really been a lot. And the husband's going, yeah, it is hard, but I really don't want to deal with it. I saw it growing up and I'm the firstborn, so I'm kind of in the middle of all of it. And yeah, and the way, um, let's say, you know, the way mom treats dad is really not okay. And I, I don't like it, but I just kind of endure it, and so she's right, but I, I really don't want to, uh, you know, it's too hard. I don't want to address it because I know how it'll go. Uh, I know Dad won't kind of say much, and Mom might get really upset. So I just don't deal with it. So it sounds like eggshells, pins, and needles. Right. So then I say, yep. then I say, see it, don't wear it. I say, see their story. So let's talk a little bit about your mom's story, what well, she see brought See it, in. don't wear it. What see does it, don't that wear. mean? I'm going to see their issues. I'm going to see that they are image bearers of God. I see their stuff. I'm not going to let it define me. I'm going to see their issues. So that way I can at least develop a level of contentment with who I am in Christ to know I'm going to be compassionate when I'm having the hard conversation. And if I'm going to come into that with guns ablazing, with needing to be right, or making sure they realize after 15 minutes that they are controlling, they are manipulative, that's my intent, then I need to take a step back and know that if I've been practicing in my quiet time, hey, I, I want to just be honorable, but I want to say how it, how it lands for me. And, you know, when I do this work with couples, so let's say I'm seeing the young couple, and let's say they have that conversation and one of the parents left the room, and everybody leaves in a huff. Now what? Right? Yeah. So now what do we do? Well, yeah. that was fail. That was a failed experiment, and you know it's happening at the cabin. And now we've got Thanksgiving coming up in three months. Yeah. So what are we going to do? Right. Yeah. So real life. So then I'm probably then talking to the the couple again and saying, yeah, well, you know what what feels like a next step. So we'll talk about it, talk about it. And usually what I find is that in this kind of case. The, the, the guy needs to step into what he's been avoiding for a couple of decades, not to prove a point, but just to be honest about how it felt 
and then to ask the parents what they were feeling in that last conversation. So he would then maybe ask to meet separately with his parents mm-hmm. and address that. If, you know, him and his wife are in my office and let's try it this way. And the wife would, would you know, hopefully if, as long as she's feeling protected and feeling like, yeah, maybe that makes more sense so the parents don't feel like we're, you know, ganging up because we want to be sensitive, we want to be honorable to what they're feeling, we want to have empathy for what they're feeling, we want to have compassion for what they're feeling. Let's try it again. And the son goes again and says, you know, I was, it was hard for me, uh, dad, when you left or mom when you left because we're really trying to just say we love you, we're for you, but this issue that popping up um, is really hard and we feel this tension of, you know, in this case, maybe how mom is treating my wife. It, it's, it's not okay. You know, when mom, when you said this, it was hurtful. Yeah. What if a person has never spoken to their parents that way in their life? Right. So this is why it doesn't happen overnight. Right. <laughs> right. And, it, yeah. and, and I might, I might ask the guy, Hey, would you rather do that? Or, or, or do yeah, you know, just kidding, you know, cut your finger off, you know? Yeah. No, they take the finger Where's off. Where's the knife? Yeah, yeah. Right. Let's go. Yeah. So, but again, this is, this is not like obligations. This is like freedom <laughs> to like, know, like if I am learning, learning how to lean into hard situations, then my kids aren't in Todd's office in 20 years, right? Because they're going to learn, like when I'm with my kid then, and they're 14, and they're upset with me, I'm not going to leave the room like my, I saw my parents do. I'm going to lean in and say, well, what do you got, mm-hmm. right? So it, the idea would be is in my quiet time, I'm for the idea of knowing that God is inspiring me to have a difficult conversation in a reasonable way. I'm not defined by how it goes, but I'm defined by my intent, Okay, my intent came from a place of purity and honesty, but I can see, because I have compassion, because I see my folks, I see their stories. Dad grew up where his family didn't talk about anything. Mom grew up with maybe lots of uh, arguing, and it was pretty chaotic, and nothing got solved. So I see that. Yeah. Because what happens, Bill, because then I want people to have a forgiveness mindset. I want them to forgive that situation versus being defined by it and having a hurt mindset. Forgiveness doesn't mean we're all set. Forgiveness means we're having boundaries. We've been honest about what we're feeling, and we're going to have an honest conversation about mm-hmm. it. So the see it, don't wear it means, like, I'm, I, I see you in that. I see you. Jesus sees through, right? He sees our story. And if I'm spending more time in my quiet time seeing my, my parents' story and having compassion for what they went through and all the beauty and all the, all the ashes of both, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Then that That's gives lovely. me more... That gives me more capacity because I always tell parents. So if I were, so let's say I was seeing the parents and they said, "Yeah, one of us left." I, Jesus, I, you know, look what all we've done for them. Wait a minute, now, no, I want your capacity to love your kids to be greater than you need to be loved by them right now. Okay, so because they might all, they, you know, how were you when you were thirty-two? Right, you had three kids, you were stressed out, life was hard. So just kind of, you know, remember that they're for you, they love you. You can give them an opportunity to know that you're enough in Christ, just to hear. They got us. They're struggling with this. Yeah, but Todd, they could, they accuse me of being manipulative. They accuse me of being controlling. What is that? I mean, how do I, how do I be honorable in Jesus about that? Right. So then I would say, hear that. That makes a lot of sense. But I would ask you to, to try to gain more information. Try to say like that hurt to hear that. That was hard to hear that. Tell me, you know, help me understand that and what would be more helpful. I, I'm tell, I tell parents my age, I tell myself that, you, you know, uh, be in the game of continuing to learn to grow. And then I tell the 30-something, say, have understanding for your parents and their story too, right? You know, just be, be honest with them, but also try to hear their perspective. So the second step in this case might be the son going to the parents and trying to try it again and say, hey, this is just what we're noticing and I notice it too. And then the mom might get really big like she has before with him and he might start to shut down and he might tear up or he might feel difficult. And in that case, I would have the, uh, that's where in this case, the husband of the wife needs to be able to say, "Hun, you know, let's just listen to what our son has to say. Mm-hmm. It's, the, the fa- it's likely the father has never said that to his wife. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the issue that they have. Does yeah. Make sense? And until the husband, in this case, says to the wife, hey, I, th- I felt, I, I, you know, I left because I was feeling overwhelmed. But I, I think they, you know, I know I do stuff wrong every day too, hon, but I think they're right about this, and I have seen that. Now, that's going to be big for, in this case, the husband to tell the wife. And it could be the other way around, the wife telling the husband, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, it's mutual, okay? So 
so that's kind of the first volley. So now the, the mess is on the table, right? And it, it's messy. Yeah. But we're going to be committed to trying to address the mess in a reasonable, loving way. And so that's what we try to do the next time around, that if son goes to the parents, it maybe goes a little bit better. And then, Bill, you know, we have my second boundary, which is next. All right, we'll take a break and come back with Todd's Mulliken second boundary. I can't wait to find out what it is. You can learn more about Todd at toddmulliken.com. Also, if you'd like to join into this discussion because you've got a question or comment about boundaries with uh, your parents or your um, an adult child and you, you're trying to love your parent and it's hard to set a good boundary. You have a question, send it over via text 877-933-2484. If you just joined me, Todd Mulliken is my guest. We're talking about setting boundaries. Uh, parents having their adult children setting boundaries with them. And it can be hard and they can feel overwhelmed by it. And then adult children trying to love their parents well, but find it hard to set good boundaries. Now, Todd, let's talk a little bit about uh, the fighter and the flighter because those mm. seem to be the kind of personality types that you say we need to be better at being a fair fighter and then not being such a fast flighter. Did I say that right? <laughs> I love that. That's good. Well, okay. Yeah. I, I yeah. kind of remember what you said during the break. Yeah. No, I, you know, before we talk about second boundary, I think it is, I think, because you brought up a good point earlier too about how do we do this well, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, how do you, and I do think it really does start with each of the four people, you know, looking in the mirror. It starts with me looking in the mirror and understanding my design, how God has made me. What am I noticing about myself under stress? And in the book, I do talk a fair amount about, in general, you know, just as just as Jesus came, as we learn about in John 1, 14 and 17, where Jesus came full of truth, full of grace. I My observation has been, I think some of us under stress are more apt to kind of be the good truth teller under grace. And I think in that truth teller style, we tend to want to, you know, we have fight or flight stuff in our in our um, sympathetic nervous system. Mm-hmm. So under stress, fight or flight kind of, you know, takes off. So I have found some people, Bill, typically more the truth tellers are more apt to fight and engage and get after it. And I think the strengths they bring is they will be decisive. They will say what's on their mind. They will not avoid the mess. And um, while your house is on fire, say everything's fine. You know, they'll call it out. Mm -hmm. And we need that. We need a parent to call out tough stuff when the kids aren't, you know, doing the right thing, when when stuff's hard in a marriage, when stuff's hard in a parent-child relationship. They're, They're more apt to call something out. Okay? But the flighter, and so the best part of the fighter is that they will say what's on their mind and they'll be decisive. The worst part is what they say when they're stressed, is they tend to be more interrogative versus interactive. So if I'm a fighter, if God has designed me to say a little bit of fire ready aim versus aim fire, you know, if I, how do I learn how to slow that down in my quiet time and say like, because I am blessed with the fact that I'm willing to address a tough situation when there is one that's hard. And Jesus did plenty of that, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that God's designed me that way, but I have to create an environment where I'm doing more inviting the other person into the hard conversation versus getting the last word in and needing to be right. The flighter tends to be really good at wanting harmony, the grace, you know, wanting things to be okay. Can we reason together, please? Can we just mediate this? Because this is really hard. And But I am for harmony. I am for us trying mm. to work it out. And we need that style too. I thought the flighter just wants out. They do. That's the worst part, right? Okay. But I mean, if the flighter, they'll want to flee under stress, right? Yeah. But but they also want the best part. They have some. They have some good stuff too. They also want things to be okay. Yeah. Right. They they want harmony. You know. They and do. the fighter wants to be right. Yep. Okay. So the flighter, though, the problem with the flighter is they just want to be liked too much. 
too. You know, like or they just want peace. They do. They want the peace, and of course, we, you and I have talked about what's the difference between being a peacemaker and a peacekeeper, right? <laughs> Peacemaker is what we're called to do in the, in the Sermon on the Mount, right, by Jesus. But peacekeeping means we avoid hard stuff, and we do, we can't. You know, it doesn't mean we look forward to it. So the flighter's main step next is Bill is to stay engaged in the difficult discussion, breathe through it, know that they're enough in Jesus, try to find their words be practicing ahead of time, but just to try to stay in there a little bit longer and know like God's still on the throne. Okay, mm-hmm. He is. He's still for us. He's still holding us. This is hard. I want to run, but eventually I got to come back and address the mess because when I don't address the mess, I carry the mess in the body. Eventually goes, what are you doing with all this mess in here? And we get panic feelings. We can get anxiety. We can get other things. So I need to address the mess. So I have found it most helpful, Bill, when... You know, boundaries are meant to bring clarity, like I mentioned. We have the honest conversation first. But it's more likely to go more reasonably well if the two people that were bringing it did their own work and understanding their design, right? So if I'm the fl- the fighter, in this case, that'd be probably more the daughter-in-law. How do I... How do I interact well here and create an invitation to these people versus, well, they're controlling me, so I'm not going to do that, versus, well, take power in the fact that you get to invite into a tough discussion and, and say what's on your mind and be assertive about it, which is clear, direct, empathetic. Mm-hmm. It's not indirect. It's not passive aggressive. It's clear, but it's empathetic. It has compassion. Mm-hmm. Todd, and, let's talk about the spiritual dimension to this. This comment came in, and I think is very interesting, very wise. One thing to consider, there is a demonic force of division where unhealthy parents raised unhealed children mm-hmm. and unhealed parents need to say sorry this mm-hmm. only happens when with the power of the holy spirit to change the parental heart it isn't the child's place to heal the parent great stuff oh, yes. yeah i love that so of course you know the spiritual realms of are are alive and well right yeah the forces of good and evil and but and and with that you know sometimes it is you know, that type of issue where I've got my own stuff. And that's that internal reflection, right? So in my prayer time, it's just, as this listener brought up so wisely, if I'm that older parent, if you will, how am I like looking in my own mirror spiritually and, and understanding my own issues from my story? And how am I making sure I'm really healing those wounds that maybe a father wound, a father wound, a mother wound, what, whatever the issues are and getting good help for that so that I'm more at my best in Jesus when I'm listening to my kids. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's right. Then that spirit of division gets quieter because there's more healing that's going on. Mm-hmm. And there's plenty of cases I've worked with where it is, that is the primary issue. Right. And so I love that. That's good. Yeah. So that's always something we want to be doing in our quiet time is, Lord, you know, show me, please, you know, show me some of the unhealed spaces in my life. And that's where I do think, you know, the beauty of a healthy partnership and marriage, like how am I with my wife, in this case for me as a husband, how am I like saying my stuff and being vulnerable with, with her and how is she doing saying her stuff with me? And then once in a while, how do we, you know, out of love, just share God, I was, I was really hurt, and it feels like there's unhealed stuff there. I know I got mine. What do you think? And so we get to support each other in that journey, too. Mm-hmm. That's a real important piece. Mm-hmm. Todd, what happens when a, a boundary is set that just doesn't feel kind or realistic, mm-hmm. or somebody says, uh, going forward, we are never going to do Thanksgiving at your house because it is the holiday that we never miss at my family's house, so therefore we will never be with your family at Thanksgiving. Right, and, and I, and I go, say this yeah. very light. I, I feel, that reasonable? No, you're right. And so, I, please don't hear the word narcissism. It means everybody that does it's a narcissist because people are overdiagnosing narcissism these days. But the sixth, the fifth symptom of narcissistic personality disorder is um, a sense of entitlement, and they expect automatic compliance to their wishes and extra favorable treatment. So, people that have narcissistic edges tend to make demands, not requests. Hmm. So, I'm going to make a request, but it's not going to be a demand. Right, and so if I say that that in that type of binary black and white way, that's a demand, not a request. That that has that 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 expects compliance from the spouse versus the spouse having his or her own voice in that and saying, "Galahun, I'm not comfortable with that because, you know, um, you know." So 
on a side note, I usually have couples work on their own traditions as a young couple and how are they creating their own traditions and before their family's traditions too, but have their own traditions and then right. loving, loving parents respect those traditions, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, so what you're bringing up there is more of a, you know, a demanding uh, posture versus an inviting posture. And so if I'm on the receiving end of that, if my wife said that, I would say, gal, that really lands not okay for me. It feels like demanding. And uh, yeah, I want to talk more about that because it's important for us to, I think, chain, you know, trade holidays. I think it's important for us as a couple to have our own traditions with our kids. And what are we for with that? Mm-hmm. And how do we honor our parents' uh, traditions as well and do the best we can with that? Mm-hmm. Todd, Todd Mulliken is my guest, and you can learn more about him at toddmulliken.com. And we are going to take a short break and come back and continue talking about boundaries. There's been some wonderful comments that have come in. If you have a question for Todd about a boundary or a comment you'd like to make about what you've heard, 877-933-2484. And if you uh, are interested in uh, learning more about what it means to begin a relationship with Jesus or to chat with someone who can help, just text the word FAITH to four. One, two, two, four, four, one, two, two, four. We'll be right back. We carry each other's burdens. Please know you can bring us your prayer concerns and we will pray. Share your prayer requests with the Faith Radio team by texting or calling 877-933-2484 or share your prayer requests with the Faith Radio staff and listeners at myfaithradio.com. I'm back with Todd Mulliken. We're talking about boundaries, and we're going to talk about the second boundary now, Todd. We only have about nine minutes left, so you're on. Okay. Boundary so the first two. boundary is that honest conversation. Yes. You know, I, I, in a verse that just came to me over the break, what I was thinking about is love must be sincere, Romans 12, 9. So I think when the flighter is worried about being honest and, like, that's going to cause problems, the flighter is so defined, Bill, by how it goes versus being defined by you know, just the integrity of just being sincere. And sincere in saying, God, this is... Okay, okay hang on a second. Yeah. If, if you are the... F- the f- flighter, yeah. you're interested in how it goes, but you should be interested in the truth that's being told and not be so interested in how it goes. Correct. Okay. That's a great correction. All right. And I was just trying to no, see that's, if I understood that correctly. No, you're right. Yeah. And they're too defined by how it goes, and that's what gets them really in a struggle. Does that make sense? Yeah. They're defined yeah. by how it goes. Hey, they, they, So they'll, they'll come to me next week and go, that was horrible advice. <laughs> I thought you were a good counselor. That was yeah. horrible. I said, well, yeah. tell me more. And he said, well, it went horribly. I said, I know. Honesty today, though, will prevent problems tomorrow. So you've, you're honest now, and now something's on the table, and that's the purpose of the first boundary. We're just trying to get something on the table. But our posture, whether we're the adult kids or we're the parents, our posture is one of compassion, empathy, trying to understand, and trying to come let us reason together. Yeah. Right? That's the first boundary. Now, when it doesn't work... And when we're in process of trying to get better, we do practice my second boundary, which is called loving detachment or medium chill, meaning like, hey, you know, because what happens to some people is we try the first volley, it doesn't go well. Well, we'll never see you again until it goes well. Oh, that's not good. Right. And, and, you know, and once in a while that may be needed if it's like severe abuse or something. But Mm -hmm. if it's like a, a, you know, a difficult conversation where it doesn't go well, in my opinion, we're, we're, we're in process on that. We're not in denial about it. We're in process. We are going to keep addressing that in counseling or we're going to meet again. In this case, we talked about the son going to the parents next. So that, that hard is in process. But like Paul said, whether I'm in the plenty or the want, I'm learning to be content. So I'm content because I'm addressing the mess. But I am also, we also, you know, every other Sunday go there for dinner and we can be respectful and cordial in this place of loving detachment and medium chill, if you will. Mm-hmm. Act respectfully because we know we're in the hard. That makes sense? So we're, we're practicing because people will really struggle with this boundary, but if they don't do this boundary, they just create more and more of a hurt mindset, more and more a build a case against, and then the generational patterns continue. So I think it's good to have a reasonable loving, gentle dialogue, because we know we're going to be addressing the hard stuff in two weeks, right? So that's that boundary. Um, Some people have that boundary, Bill, like let's say the first boundary, the honest conversation just blows up, goes horribly. 
But, you know, the kids still, you know, the grandkids still want to see the grandparents. And so what do we do? Well, we know this is not going well, but we still go over. But maybe we go to Thanksgiving for a couple of hours versus a couple of days. Or we're respectful and cordial, but we're leading out with this loving detachment, which is respectful and cordial amidst the heart. Because the alternative is worse, really. So I have a lot of people, Bill, who are in that that medium, chill, loving detachment place where they're still, you know, in that generational struggle, right? Where the parents are trying to heal, the kids are trying to heal. They're in process, though, but they see that they're trying to learn how to fight right. They're trying to learn how to come together. Uh, They're trying to change their motivations to not win and not be right, but rather seeking to understand versus needing to be right. And so... That's that main second boundary is how do we live in the tension bill and still break bread occasionally while we're dealing with the heart. Mm -hmm. And when you say break bread, that means be living together and still having activities together, not necessarily just showing up for a meal. Correct. Yeah, because there's there's kids' games and recitals and all kinds of things that involve cooperation and joy, and that should be a a great time, not not a stressful time. Right. What did you call the chill? Medium chill. Medium chill. Okay. <laughs> so you're not wearing it as much. You know? Yeah. Because of what happens. But you don't pe- want to be phoning it in either. No. Having it be phony, right? No. Yeah. Right. No, because we're, we're not being phony because in two weeks we're talking about it some more. We're okay. getting together. Okay. So again, we're addressing the mess, right? Okay. So it's not like we're in denial. We're in our denial sweatshirts for Thanksgiving, right? right. So we're, we're really, we're addressing it. Okay. Now, and again, each case is different. Some are more severe, some are more mild. So I, I don't mean, I'm trying to give people a general overview. But what's really important, though, is while you have this issue coming up, are you and I working on our own side of the street and looking at our own stuff from our own generational patterns that we get to heal, that we get to come towards each other with and have compassion and have vulnerability about that? Mm-hmm. The third boundary is actually really a hard one, Bill, that is really difficult that I have to use occasionally when there is a need. And sometimes the the third boundary is a a boundary of separation for a season, right? So it's gone really horribly. It's really tough. And so what that boundary means is that we would really like to have a mediator before we discuss this again, right? It went chaotically. Mm Mm-hmm. And so we have to be, you know, reasonable enough to realize that once in a while it goes that way. And then we try to get a a professional that knows what he or she is doing and is trained in this area of mediating and creating safe spaces. And that can be very helpful, can it? It can be a life changer. Because what happens, you know, one of the things you said off the air that was really wise is some parents, you know, when we get older, if we haven't learned how to communicate, how do we, you know, we don't just pick that up in the mail, right? It doesn't show up. Right, it's hard. So that's something I tell the 30-somethings all the time. It's like, hey, have compassion. I tell the, the people my age, like when you're looking at 30-somethings, hey, have compassion for their stories. They're feeling stressed. They're, they're just feeling this level of control. And say, hey, let's talk about it. What does that look like? So uh, it doesn't mean we have to know all the right things to say. It's really more of the attitude I have, the mindset I have. Am I seeing the other as Jesus sees them? So at least that helps me. So that remember that thing I wanted to make sure we talk about before we are done is that forgiveness mindset versus the hurt mindset. So the forgiveness mindset is that 70 times 7, I release the other, I see their stuff, I see their story, I forgive that, I'm called to release that versus hold against, but I'm setting these boundaries and we're trying to have honest conversations and we're trying to change generational patterns, um, but I'm for you and I want to have a forgiveness mindset. The hurt mindset does not trust any intention. They build a case against, and they just really stay hurt and build resentment. And so even though it's a very comforting place to be, it will keep us stuck. So the forgiveness mindset is not like la-la land. It's not, you know, but it is, it's powerful because, you know, we are called to forgive, We're called to release the other and uh, we can do that while still having really good boundaries. Mm-hmm. So those are the three main boundaries. But my, my hope and prayer, Bill, is that folks that are the, the, the you know, the 30-somethings or whatever that are having to maybe set a boundary, that they just know that they, they get to do it in a really respectful, honorable way and lead out well. Mm-hmm. And that's the best they can do. And they get to do that well, you know, not out of a performance, but out of just uh, a purity, you know, and have charity versus a sense of compromise. 
And then I, I, I ask the parents that may have a difficult situation they're experiencing with one of their kids just to, to be curious about it mm-hmm. and to show that empathy. Todd, thank you so much. Todd Mullican has been my guest. We've talked about boundaries in the hour, if you've missed any of it. And boundaries are an issue for you with uh, your parents. You can check it out at the podcast. We're going to take a break. We come back. Old Testament scholar Dr. David Lamb is going to talk about the book of Esther. That's all next. Thanks for listening. Programming like this is made available through your support. Information available at MyFaithRadio.com.